We're going we're to begin today with a closer look at one of this country's most well-known media outlets, National Public Radio. Now, for years and years, NPR news and programs are funded in part by the government and in part by listeners, those who call in and pledge money and those who give big donations. Now, over the recent years, it has been more and more common to hear the names of sponsors on NPR. And it turns out there are even certain programs sponsored entirely by one company that may or may not influence the content of the program. Now, let's take a look at today at one financial program, Planet Money, hosted by Adam Davidson. When you click on to listen, uh, you're likely to hear this. Support for Planet Money comes from Ally Bank. NPR keeps people in the know, so does Ally. Customers can talk to a real person any time of day or night. Learn more at AllyBank.com. Well, as it turns out, Ally Bank has, among other things, spent quite a bit of money lobbying against the creation of what is now the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. So it's no surprise then that when Planet Money host Adam Davidson had the head of C CFPB, Elizabeth Warren, on for an interview, uh, things got a little heated. Take a listen. This crisis will not be over until the American family begins to recover. This crisis does well, not that, exist that's independently. Your crisis. That's the, no, it that's is not a... my crisis. That is America's crisis. If people cannot pay their credit card bills, if but they you cannot are pay not their in mortgages. The of views on this issue. This, of course, just a snippet from the 15 plus minute interview. But we want to talk today with two journalists who allege this is just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to questionable practices by Adam Davidson and the Planet Money team. Mark Ames and Yasha Levine are the founders of the website Shame, or Shame on the Hacks that Abuse Media Ethics. Mark is here with me in Washington, as Yasha is in our studios in Los Angeles. Uh, Mark, let me start with you, and, and we will get to some of the other uh, things in a moment, but let's just talk specifically about this interview. Uh, definitely at several points in the interview got very fiery, uh, but why couldn't this just be Adam Davidson doing his job, you know, asking tough questions like journalists are supposed to? Here's the thing. When when this interview happened, people were shocked. Nobody understood because you assume Adam Davidson is sort of this gee whiz, dweeby, you know, guy just trying to discover what's going on just as much as the next person. Nobody knew that the sole funder of his sole funder, the guy who was paying him his money, was Ally Bank, which is GMAC, which was one of the, the you know poster child banks of of you know fraud, subprime fraud, foreclosure fraud. It was and it, it uh, got over 17 billion dollars in bailout money, and it had just arranged a deal uh, with Planet Money to be their sole and exclusive sponsor. And this wasn't disclosed. And at the same time that Davidson attacked um, uh, Elizabeth Warren, um, Ally Bank was spending hundreds of thousands of dollars, and you know here in Washington, lobbying to kill what Warren was trying to set up, which is a consumer, uh, consumer protection agency. And, and as we know, it, it's not just uh, sort of the sponsor of this program. Yasha, I want to go to you now uh, and have you talk about some of the paid speaking engagements Davidson uh, did. You know, who were they for, and, and what's the big deal? Well, yeah, well, we don't know the full story, but just s some of the information that could be gleaned from um, public information. Uh, he's done uh, a handful of speaking en engagements uh, over the past uh, two years, speaking at um, conferences and events sponsored and funded by the, some of the biggest banks in the world. I'm talking about, you know, J.P. Morgan, Bank of America, uh, um, of course, uh, Goldman Sachs. Um, and you know, the, in particular, the, the most recent ones were about uh, micro lending and, and, and microfinance. But it doesn't really matter because you know um, these are this is a corporate speaking gigs. Uh, usually they're paid and pretty well paid. Um, we don't know how much he was paid uh, for, for them uh, because he ha uh, Davidson refuses to disclose that information, and so does NPR. NPR won't provide it. But we do know that he has appeared at multiple uh, events sponsored by uh, the, the Wall Street and the banking industry, and he was presumably paid for them. But um, Yasha, and, now, and we've, we, didn't, just, we didn't mm -hmm. mention, but um, Adam Davidson also contributes uh, to the New York Times Magazine at times. A and both the New York Times and NPR have very strict policies about accepting paid speaking engagements. And I know uh, both have been questioned about this, uh, I believe by The Observer, and both have responded that he is not going against any company policy. So why then should people be concerned? Well, I just we don't know how what, what uh, standard they use to make to, to arrive at that conclusion. 
you know, just from the information that we, that we were able to gather and, and find, the evidence is pretty, pretty damning and shows that there is some conflict of interest there. Now, they, they, but they won't release any information at all about the nature of the speaking in, engagements that um, Davidson did, how, how much was he paid, um, what, were, you know, what were the terms. Um, and, and so we, we, uh, they're not being transparent about the information, about the process that, they've, you know, that they used to arrive at that conclusion that everything is OK. We're supposed to trust them. But you know, to be honest, there's not much trust. You, you can't really have much trust in them when they um, they've shown to be um, not engaging in good faith. Mark, uh, I, want the, yeah, I, want, I just wanted to add uh, uh, to what Yasha said. On top of it, it's not just that he's taking this money, but it's also that he is promoting their positions. He's, he's promoting an extreme right-wing neoliberal agenda over and over. He's, he writes that, you know, we need to squeeze the middle class. He writes that, uh, um, you know, we should basically worship Wall Street, that everything that has made us happy in this world came from Wall Street. He literally wrote that in the New York Times. Uh, <laughs> you know, he's, he, he's been promoting sweatshop labor. He's been promoting, like, all kinds of crazy schemes and, at the same time, taking money from these guys. So the real problem is when you're taking money from these people covertly and then, you know, and then promoting their agenda on NPR, you're essentially um, a, a product spokesman. And, and Davidson is a, is a product spokesman but we don't, we haven't been disclosed that fact. And I should also add that uh, Chicago Public Media, which is the uh, public corporation that um, uh, that, that is part, yeah, is a partner in this, has a specific policy that journalists should not take money from the subjects that they report on. And he takes money from the subjects he reports on, and he reports positively on them, and he, and he promotes their agenda. So it is a violation. They didn't say it's not a violation. They just basically said no comment. They took the fifth. Uh, let me ask you, Yasha, yeah. I mean, let, let's take this a little broader. Um, you know, as much as we like to think of journalism, I certainly do, as sort of a higher calling, a fourth estate, uh, in many cases it is still a business, and, and that requires advertisers. Um, so how do you propose uh, there, there be a better balance between keeping uh, a journalistic outlet afloat and keeping it honest? Well, this is not about even advertisers. I mean, um, you know, having uh, advertisers and, and, and hopefully you have a diverse set of advertisers so, you know, you're not too conflicted on any issue or, and if there is conflict, you disclose that fact to your readers openly and, and, and you re re release information about how much your, uh, your publication or the, the per, you know, the person or the show is receiving from, from the sponsor if you're going to be reporting on the same, uh, the, the thing, on issues that affect that sponsor's bottom line. But, you know, but this is, but, you know, the problem with Davidson and a lot of other jur journalists who are, you know, engage in similar sort of, uh, have, have a similar business plan, I guess, for, for their journalism career, it's not about advertisers. It's really about covert payments for, that you receive from um, the industries that you report on. Uh, and, you know, this is just, I'm talking about speaking fees. And then the other aspect is Planet Money. It's, it, it, Ally Bank is not just a, an advertiser. It is its sole exclusive sponsor. So, meaning that all the all the funding that that Ally Bank gets to, to or most of it to, to to stay on the air and to produce its shows comes from this one bank. And, and um, we should and, say and it's, we should say that, that Planet yes. Money is not um, the only place that this goes on. But I know that you guys have recently uh, written about this. Uh, Mark, talk about the Shame Project. How do you guys decide, uh, you know, who to focus on? Um, you know, we, we have discussions between ourselves and with other journalists that, that um, work with us, sort of, um, that, that provide help to us. And I wouldn't say there's, you know, there's, there's not like a, um, a, a strict objective standard. It's sort of... Would you, would what, you say this is becoming more and more common, that this goes oh, on? Oh, no, there's no doubt. I mean, look, um, Columbia uh, Journalism School did a, did a study that... Uh, the ratio of <clears throat> PR people to uh, journalists in 1980 was about one to one, and now it's about four to one. Actually, now it's probably a lot worse because four to one was in 2008, and right. you know, the journalism profession. And that doesn't include all the Malcolm Gladwells and Adam Davidsons, and all these basically uh, covert product spokesmen that um, are fronting as as journalists. So um, you know, look, this makes it hard for us to do our jobs when we're trying to do real journalism because these these. People act as trolls, just like Adam Davidson. When you know, you listen to what he did to, to uh, Elizabeth Warren. Nobody now, if everybody knew that he was being paid by Ally Bank. 
That would have ended it. There would have been no question. Yeah, the and reason I think we put it on that. the screen. That was from 2009. That was from 2009. And that was great. And that, this is sort of just coming out. Exactly. Now. It's just coming out, out now, three years later. Now, there were a few people that um, complained at the time. And as usual, the ombudsman said, uh, the, um, the ombudsman called these people cynical. Right, you know, so they basically they have no argument. It's obviously corrupt. There is no excuse for it whatsoever. So you just impugn the, uh, you know, the intentions of, of the accuser. Yeah, so we're almost out of time. Let me just let me just end really quick with you. Um, and for journalists, I, I mean, is making money off a story? You think it's the ultimate ethical issue? Uh, making mo no, well. When, when of course, everyone has to make a living, but no, it's not the ultimate goal. You know, you don't go into journalism to make a fortune. That's definitely. A yeah, absolutely. Uh, certainly an issue, though, as we you see. Go, you go into journalism to fight power. Right, right. Uh, not That's to uh, exactly. get into bed not with them, right? Not to suck up to them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, really good to talk to both of you. Uh, Shame website founders Mark Ames and Yasha Levine. Uh, thanks so much for coming on the show today. Thanks.